UTPA women's basketball on the verge of history. We'll tell you what they've done. UTPA baseball involved in a thriller at number 15 Texas. And the Bronx have their first WAC champion. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Bronx Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. UTPA women's basketball head coach Larry Tidwell challenged his team last week after a skid put their hopes of the program's first winning season in 31 years at the brink. He challenged them to win out and make some history. To say the least, the Bronx responded. Playing host to second place Bakersfield on Thursday, the only team to knock off regular season champion Idaho this year. Early on, game tied at two, not anymore, and never again. Brittany Bush hits the layup, Bronx up four to two, and they're not only gonna lead the rest of the way, they're gonna leave no doubt. Four minutes later, Shantae Goff buries the triple, Bronx up 18-6. The Roadrunners climb to within seven at the nine minute mark, but Tonisha Walker having none of that. Connects from three, not once, but twice. Bronx up 15, it's 33-18. The Roadrunners pulled within single figures once more early in the second half, but Goff responds with a three to make it 49-37. The Bronx led by as many as 23 points in this game. Bronx wins 84-62. The 22-point win ties for the Bronx largest in whack play this season. More importantly, the win gives the Bronx the tiebreaker advantage over New Mexico State and Kansas City as they were both swept by the Roadrunners. Big games for Goff and Kaylin Boyd Goff had four three-pointers while scoring her 22 points. Boyd went three for 15 from the line for her season-high 21 points, while grabbing seven boards to go with five assists and four steals. Well, I thought that we played some uh, Bronx basketball that we needed to play the entire year. It's, uh, it's, a, it's the kind of game I thought we could do, be doing all year. We had some people hit some free shots, we were good from the line. I mean, we, we attacked the rim, we hit some big shots, we shot 47% for the game. Just a lot of positive things. Final home game of the season, 48 hours later against Utah Valley, the Bronx honored senior Laquita Garner before the game. The game was tight for about 23 minutes, with neither team leading by more than a possession, but Chante Goff hit this jumper, and then a layup. Bronx up four, it's 29-25. Less than three minutes later, Bronx down one, not anymore. Goff buries the three, 34-32 Bronx. After her Goff free throw, it's Raquel Preston's turn. The layup puts the Bronx up five, and then, after a timeout, it's more of the same. Jasmine Thompson with not one, but two layups to put the Bronx up nine. And then after a pair of Goff free throws, we're back to Preston. 14-0 run puts the Bronx up 45-32. The Bronx go on to win 55-46. With the win, the Bronx clinched at least the top four seed in the WAC tournament. They also tied the program record for wins with 14, and the program record in conference wins with eight. Goff led the way again, this time with 16 points, while earning WAC Player of the Week honors. How about Preston? Career high 11 points on five of nine shooting, career high eight rebounds, and two steals to boot. Today I thought it was a good effort. We all played as a team. And overall, we play good defense. It was all about defense. Our kids played defense from the very starting jump tip to the end of the end of the game when we were fighting for everything. It was about defense. I had some kids really perform. You know, uh, you know, Rocky, uh, Raquel Press and Rock really played well, um, and, and she really brought us a lot of energy. Shante Goff played extremely well. J.T. Thompson. I had a bunch of people step up on the perimeter, you know, uh, Tanisha Walker, a lot of big shots, great defense, Teandria Nolan. We, we just had a great overall effort. KK Boyd was in foul trouble, but came back in the second half and gave me some great minutes. The WAC standings becoming a bit more clear entering the final weekend of play. Idaho and Bakersfield are locked into the top two seeds, while Utah Valley and Chicago State are locked in at the bottom. If Seattle loses both of their games and the Bronx beat Grand Canyon on Saturday, then the Bronx have the number three seed. Otherwise, they're number four. Either way, the Bronx will face one of New Mexico State and Kansas City in the WAC quarterfinals next week. 
Well, we've got a final game uh, at Grand Canyon State. Um, it's an important game for us. One, it moves us up in the positioning for the conference tournament, but two, it would give us win number 15, and that's the most they've ever had in the history of the program in 31 years. And that's what we're after. Saturday was a big game for the Bronx in terms of program history and the WAC standings, but it was also the final home game for Bronx senior Laquita Garner. Myra Gomez has more. After four seasons of playing for the Bronx women basketball team, the time has come for senior guard number 23 Laquita Gardner to say goodbye not only to her coaches and teammates, but also to a sport that she loves. The young lady is filled with passion. She loves the game. She's fought through a plethora of injuries over the last couple of years. You know, she's had a couple of surgeries and she's bounced back from those. She's finishing her career very strong here at UTP. <laughs> Laquita started as a freshman at UTPA in 2010. Throughout the struggles with her various injuries, she has managed to become the person that her teammates look to for motivation. She's meant a lot to us. Like, she's a great team player. She's a great encourager. She's always there for you whenever you need her. And she's just that uplifting spirit that you need in the locker room. With her final games approaching, Laquita has mixed emotions about her final season at UTPA. It's becoming a bittersweet moment to know that the final home game of her career ended with a win of 55 to 46 over the Utah Valley Wolverines. Her friends and family were there to support and thank her for her time as a Bronx basketball player. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, I am Myra Gomez. <laughs> As for UTPA men's basketball, they started off the weekend with a 63-61 come from behind win at Bakersfield. The Bronx held the Roadrunners without a basket over the final four minutes while erasing a four point deficit. Jack Hines had a three with 18 seconds left to complete the comeback. Hines led the way with 18 points on seven of 12 shooting. The number that really stands out comes from Shaq Boga though, seven steals in the game. Not only is that a career high, but it's the fourth highest single game total in program history. Really got off to a great start and carried it through most of the first half and then let it slip away from us in the second half, uh, actually due to some poor play, and then bounced back with a, a great shot by Shaq Hines to win the game for us. So it was, uh, I thought, a deserved win, a hard fought win, and uh, you know an undermanned win with uh, Javon being out with injury. 48 hours later, the Bronx went to Utah Valley where, despite an incredible defensive effort, the Bronx fell 45-42. The Bronx held the Wolverines to 26% shooting, the lowest mark by an opponent in more than five years. The 45 points allowed are the fewest in over four years. Boga led the way with 14 points, Hines also in double figures with 10. Fortunately, uh, one of the good things that came out of that was, you know, that, that defensive effort was not just them shooting the ball poorly. We, we contested nearly every shot. We, we really played well. We changed up defenses, confused them a little, and they, they took a lot of difficult shots. Uh, the thing that hurt a little bit was with their misses, they got a few offensive rebounds that gave them a chance to, to be successful. But Unfortunately, on the other end, I felt we were self-inflicted also, though. We, we got some really good looks by some very good shooters and didn't take advantage of them. Uh, Utah Valley uh, guards us by just packing up the lane and making you make a couple jump shots. And, you know, we're under man without Javon and, and just didn't hit anything that, that uh, really that was a game that I really felt we could have won if we'd uh, took care of our business. Still much to be decided in the WAC standings, as the Bronx are one of four teams with five wins, and seeds four through eight are all within a game of each other entering the final weekend. The Bronx close out the season on Saturday at 7 p.m. against Grand Canyon at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Well, Grand Canyon has a you know a transfer from Texas A&M and another kid. They're a very offensively talented team. Uh, we were fortunate over there to play well offensively ourselves, and you know the game was uh, a 90 to 86 game or something like that. It was an up and down affair, but you know hopefully we can defend a little better here. But uh, they're they're a tough challenge for us. Their front line six nine six eight, very talented group, and and then Garrity is having you know an all conference year at the guard spot. So uh, be a be a challenge for us. But again, you know 
every night is, and, and hopefully we can come in and play well. Spring break is next week. It's not too late to make your plans to go to Las Vegas. After all, that's where the WAC tournaments are this year. You can get a ticket to all 14 WAC tournament men's and women's basketball games for just $165. We even have an in on hotel rooms through corporate travel. So give us a call or visit utpabronx.com slash WAC today. Hey, we've been telling you Bronx country just got a lot bigger, haven't we? Well, Viva Las Vegas! Bronx baseball on their first road trip of the season. Coming up on Bronx country, we take you to the diamond for all the action. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. The UTPA baseball team kicked off a tough five-game road trip last week, and they started with one of their longtime rivals, the 15th-ranked University of Texas. Alex Henson making his first career start for the Bronx, and he was good. Strikes out Trace Barrera there. And then the Bronx gave Henson a lead to work with. Third inning, Michael Baca at second with two outs, and that's up the middle and into center field for a base hit. Baca comes home to score. It's one to nothing Bronx. And the way Henson was pitching, it seemed like enough. Sixth inning, Casey Clemens pops out. Six innings, two hits, two walks, two Ks for Henson. On to the eighth. Longhorns threatening. Tying run at second with one out. And Austin Casas gets Brooks Marlowe swinging. One batter later, it's second and third with two outs. And CJ Inosa flies out to left. The Bronx are three outs away from the upset. Ninth inning now. Bases loaded, one out for the Longhorns and Ben Johnson lifts a fly ball to left center. That's deep enough to score Madison Carter. Game tied to one. Next batter, Zane Gurwitz can win it with a single. Not so fast. Tanner Dickerson induces the ground out. We're going to extras. Top of the 10. The Bronx have runners at the corners with two outs. Brian Stites to the right side. Amazing stop by Marlow. His throw deemed in time to beat the head first slide of Stites. Let's take another look so you can see just how close this play was would have scored the go-ahead run. Instead, we go to the 11th. The Longhorns have the winning run at second with one out. Colin Shaw up the middle. What a play by Omar Avila! Not only does he get the out, but he prevents the run from scoring. Saves the game, but only temporarily. The next batter is Jacob Feltz, and he hits a bleeder to center. Longhorns win, two to one and 11. We played well that game, Danny. We got uh, solid pitching uh, from Henson. Um, we've got uh, solid defense and we hit the ball very well. So that was uh, a well-played game on our part. Uh, we just fell a little short at the end, but I was uh, happy with the way that we performed. Bronx taking on Lamar for a three-game series over the weekend. Game one on Friday, down one to nothing in the sixth. The Bronx with ducks on the pond for Victor Garcia Jr. And he comes through. Drives home Brian Ramirez and Alberto Morales. Bronx up two to one. Next batter, Dylan Engelar. Doubles to left to drive home Morales. Start of a big weekend for Engelhardt. Bronx up three to one. The Bronx added a run in the ninth. Engelhardt at second with two outs, and Andy Fortuna comes through. Engelhardt scores four to one Bronx. That was plenty for Sam Street. Second straight complete game for the right-hander, striking out nine while walking just one. He threw 102 of his 139 pitches for strikes. Bronx win four to one. Saturday's game started as a pitcher's duel. Pick it up in the third. Two on, two out for Lamar. And Matthew Harrell gets Jude Verdeen swinging. Five shutout innings for Harrell. In the seventh inning, 
the Bronx broke through. Runners on the corners with one out, and it's a squeeze play! Perfectly executed by Brian Ramirez. Evan Mason scores, one to nothing Bronx. Lamar got four in the bottom of the inning, but in the eighth, with runners in scoring position and one out, Mason with a productive out, brings home Dylan Engelhardt, Bronx within four to two. Down five to two in the ninth, the Bronx get another run on an error. But that's all, as the Cardinals beat the Bronx five to three. Sunday was a tough day for the Bronx as well. Andrew Padron pitched pretty well, allowing just one earned run out of four in four and two thirds. But the Cardinals go on to win seven to nothing. Street is street. You know what? Uh, the first game we basically uh, dominated. Uh, uh, Sam threw the ball really, really well. Uh, we played good defense behind him. Our second game, we played uh, good defense. Danny, we just left a lot of guys in scoring position. Uh, we couldn't drive in the the, uh, the runs, and we lost five to three. Um, and I, I thought on Sunday, we started off well. Uh, our freshman Andrew Padron did a nice job, um, but I think we were uh, we weren't really uh, ready to play. I thought that uh, they wanted that uh, Lamar. That is, they wanted the uh, the win more than we did. Um, so I was not happy about our, our performance on a Sunday, and that will be addressed tomorrow in practice. More history for UTPA athletics over the past week. Next on Bronx Country, we'll tell you about UTPA's first ever WAC champion. Among the stated goals of UTPA athletics after joining the WAC was to win WAC championships. This past weekend, the Bronx competed in the Indoor Track and Field Championships, and they got to championship number one. Martin Koss is the first WAC champion in Bronx history after running the mile in a time of 4.17.8. Kass also grabbed a silver medal in the 800 meter run with a time of 1.52.27. Trey Taylor, the other Bronx with a silver medal, earning it in the weight throw, while Jasmine Davison, DeAndre Barroso, and Jesus Alvarez earned bronze medals in their events. It feels, uh, it feels great. Um, it's an accomplishment of my indoor season. Um, I've been working hard all indoor. I, I've had um, good results. That's uh, 4 one in, uh, in Boston uh, on the mile, uh, breaking some, some school records. And uh, everything is now accomplished because I, I won this, this title. And I'm glad to be the first one. And uh, I, I hope that the team will get uh, many other uh, WAC champions. Big week for men's golf too, finishing second at the Mo O'Brien Intercollegiate at McNeese State. Their best finish of the year. Three Bronx in the top 10, including Matthew Charles, who finished third and just four strokes off the lead. It was a great, it was a great bounce back from, from the way we played in Houston uh, a week earlier. I felt that, uh, you know, in Houston, we, we just kind of got a little sloppy. Maybe we got a little intimidated by the golf course and, you know, we, we had a few meetings and, and had a few practices and, and changed the lineup again for the sixth time this year uh, and, and took a team that, that I felt like, you know, we'll see how these guys perform. And, and, and then when we got there and as much rain as they had, it was really one of those events where you just didn't know what was going to happen. Um, in those conditions, uh, lift clean in place, you, you just don't know uh, how that's going to affect your team. And so I was really proud of those guys. They hung in uh, under some tough conditions on the golf course and, and, uh, and played well. Anyone for tennis? Men's and women's tennis hosting five matches over the weekend. Ladies first, hosting Grand Canyon. Katya Stavrilaki was strong at number four, winning 6-3, 6-3. Over at number six, Regan Greenwood had a good match, winning 6-1, 6-2. Bronx fall, 2-5. Later in the day, Bronx hosting Texas A&M Kingsville, and the Bronx got off to a great start in doubles. Over at number two, it's Regan Greenwood and Katya Stavrilaki, eighth love. More of the same at number three for Didi Fatikova and Mariana Renzenhauer, eight love as well. Strong play at singles, Heather Borsos at number four with a 6-0-5-1 win, and then Julia Perez with a double bagel. Bronx going to win six to one. I saw a lot more determination from them after the, the morning match. It was nice to see all of my players step up. And most importantly, you know, it was the first time that everyone on my team, all my 10 players, got a chance to really step up and be there for their teammates. Big match Sunday for the Bronx, facing Kansas City. And the Bronx were strong at doubles again. Wanda Begelin and Christelle Amsalam at number one, eight to one win. 
Over at number two, great weekend for Regan Greenwood and Katya Stavrilaki. Another win for the duo, this one eight to two. On to singles, and senior captain Wanda Begelin set the tone early. First to finish, she wins 6-3, six, 6-0. Six, Moments later, Stavrilaki with the win, 6-1, six, 6-0 six, oh at number three. Bronx go on to win, 5-2. I think it's to be like as a team, like I play with Vanda, we're both from France and we, the most important thing is to like communication, communication, so it's helped us a lot and the girls, even like the girls who didn't play, like they cheers a lot, so we like keep it up and keep fighting for Bronx. It's definitely good to win a, a conference match, you know, those are the ones we really work for, so it was nice to see my team come out here, still bouncing back from our match previously that we lost. Um, but they came out here with great motivation and most importantly great communication with their doubles partners to start off our day. On to the men, hosting Grand Canyon on Friday. Ricardo Hopker and Chain Pendini with a strong match of number one doubles, winning eight to three. And then at number two, Alejandro Sanoa and Juan Cruz Soria pick up an eight seven win. Singles included a, a bunch of touch matches. Start at court number one, Juan Cruz Soria came back from a first set loss to win 6-love in the second set and 6-4 in the third. And then at number two, Chan Pindini with a 7-6, 7-6 win. The Bronx fall 3-4. Sunday meant Kansas City and the Bronx played really well. After taking the doubles point, we pick it up in singles where senior captain Sebastian Job got the Bronx off to a good start at number three, 6-2, 6-1 win. Then at number six, Alejandro Sanoa with a 6-1, 6-1 win, Bronx up 3-love. So we go to number one, where Juan Cruz Soria picked up a number victory at number one, 6-2, 6-3. Bronx win, 4 to nothing. If you want to show your support for all of these student athletes and coaches, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit BroncAthleticFund.com today see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund is by participating in our eighth annual Bay Fishing Tournament, better known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You could be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes, including a $4,000 grand prize. Visit utpabronx.com slash BAIT for more information. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Final game of the regular season for men's and women's basketball. The men at home against Grand Canyon Saturday at seven, the women on the road. Baseball's back home for a three game series against Arlington Baptist before hitting the road to face Texas A&M. Men's and women's tennis kicking off their spring break trips and women's golf is at Southern Miss. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, go is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. 
Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. <laughs> 